start with the biggest program, the biggest story going on in WWE at the moment, and that is the return, the triumphant return of Seth Rollins, the former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, the man that never lost that title. He had to relinquish that title late last year due to a significant knee injury, which kept him out all the way until Sunday night when he returned and attacked the current WWE, form, current WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Roman Reigns, after his big win over AJ Styles in the main event. Obviously, this sets up a main event for Money in the Bank, which is only a couple weeks away, where Seth Rollins will get the chance to win back the title he never lost against Roman Reigns in the main event of Money in the Bank. It is kind of weird that he's coming back as a sort of a heel, even though the fans are happy to see him, and he got a huge ovation at the beginning of Raw, and that the fans are going to boo Roman Reigns. So they got fans sort of booing Seth Rollins. They got fans definitely booing Roman Reigns. But it is a story that makes sense, and it should make for a very good match at Money in the Bank. Speaking of Money in the Bank, we had a couple of qualifying matches for the ladder match that would take place at the event in a couple of weeks. Of course, that would be for the briefcase where you can cash it in and win the title and all that good stuff that's happened over the last decade. Uh, we had winners of qualifying matches, obviously. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Chris Jericho, and Dean Ambrose uh, won all of their qualifying matches. Kevin Owens won his in the main event with a clean win over AJ Styles, which is a little surprising to me. But I've, I've been under the uh, impression that Kevin Owens is probably going to win the briefcase all along. So which one would you rather have, Kevin Owens, AJ Styles? AJ Styles looking like he's going, and he definitely is going to go with uh, a storyline where he the club is broken up, and we'll get to that in a second. But as far as Money in the Bank and this match, this match is usually very exciting every single year. And we got some, <laughs> I mean, the lineup already is pretty stellar when you have Owens, Zane, and you have Jericho, Ambrose, I mean, Cesaro, I mean, that's pretty stacked right there. So that match should be a lot of fun in a couple of weeks. And as I alluded to earlier, we had a couple of breakups here on Monday Night Raw. Uh, we had the club, AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows kind of fall apart, where AJ Styles kind of blamed Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson for losing to Roman Reigns for the second pay-per-view in a row. An even bigger breakup happened before that, when you had Charlotte kind of dropped her father like a bad habit, Ric Flair. This angle kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, we, we all knew that at some point, Charlotte had to drop Ric Flair, and, and, and not just separate, but drop him like a bad habit, because she is a heel, and would make her a bigger heel by bad-mouthing Ric Flair, who, who everybody, everyone loves. But it was really no build to this point, other than Dr. Phil telling her that she shouldn't have Ric Flair by her side. I'm interested to see what comes next when it comes to Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Uh, hopefully Dana Brooke can obviously pick up a few pointers from Charlotte. Charlotte is good on her own. She really doesn't need anybody. She doesn't need Dana Brooke. She really doesn't need Ric Flair. She's good enough on her own, but we have to see what happens with her and Dana Brooke. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow my work on the Square Circle blog on philly.com. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Vaughn M. Johnson, and we'll see you again next week.